couple months ago, harboring bees like this was illegal. But now it's uh, okay. People can have up to two hives in their backyard. But this is a hive that sort of came in uninvited. And we want to find out today what the owners would like to do with this bee, with these bees. I'm also a, a tree fan. Uh, I got an email this past week from Dan Deffenbaugh, who is who your, city, your city person talked to Amy Sandeen. Dan Deffenbaugh keeps bees out at the Prairie Loft. Amy gave you and the city Dan's name and sent him an email. Dan copied it to me because he's in Indiana for a while. So he asked me to look into this, see what we can do. And if we can unintrusively, Dan, Dan and I are both bee guys, but we're also tree guys, tree huggers. We would like everybody to come out of this alive. They have minds of their own. Uh, sometimes they're here by invitation, sometimes without. But our situation today is these bees are uninvited and we, we need to determine what to do with them. We would like to put bees with people that want to have bees and help people out that want bees removed and try to make everyone happy if we can. With us today is Cindy Kester. We're at her beautiful backyard and her maple tree is as a hive of its own. Uh, could you review your process of contacting the city and asking what to do with these bees? Um, well, I, I noticed the bees were in my tree. Um, we are trying to save the maple tree. It's old and about a year ago they put the foam on the outside, um, some tree guys did, to try to save the tree. That's what the extension agency said would be the best thing for the tree. So. I don't know, shortly after that I noticed there was some bees and I'm aware of the fact that you know we need bees and there's less and less of them in the United States and all of that. So I, I was kind of like li live and let live, you know, I wasn't worried about it. But about a month and a half ago our Papillon puppy was messing around on my patio and happened to get stung on her foot by one of the bees and she went into anaphylactic shock and was nearly dead in 10 minutes. Luckily I just got her to a vet just in time. The vet gave her adrenaline and steroids and was able to save her. And she's in Colorado now, my two little dogs are with my daughter. But then, um, so we were trying to figure out, you know, the vet said you need to probably get rid of that hive and I was saying, you know, I like having the bees for pollination and everything. And. Um, and then this week my daughter came back from Colorado and we're sitting around on the patio and I actually got stung by a bee. We don't really know how but on my thigh all of a sudden I, you know there was a stinger in there and I got stung and they started to come out of the hive at night and they all gather on the outside of the tree which for me is a little bit spooky and so a friend of mine that was here he said you know he wouldn't like having those bees that close to the dogs and my daughter and my daughter's friends and me and so that I should check with someone and see what to do about it. So I, I called the University of Nebraska actually and he told me the best thing to do would be to either let the bees be alone, just let them, leave them alone, they'll die on their own within a year, or um, you know, kill the bees. And he actually gave me the name of someone to kill, and or to kill them. And I kind of decided <laughs> that um, I was just going to let it be, but I am concerned about my dogs, you know, I don't like the idea that my little dog could get stung again by a bee and probably be dead, you know, so that's the story. Okay, so your, your outcome today is preserve the bee's life, preserve the, the tree's life, but if you, would you like them extracted if we could do it not without being lethal? Right, if we could move the bees without killing the bees, um, you know, not kill the tree, then I would probably, that would be okay. But my understanding now from the University of Nebraska was that getting the bees out of there is a pretty big thing, that it might kill the tree. And then even if we get the bees to move, more bees will probably come, come and live in there because they'll like that. Yeah. They'll like that tree. Did you talk to Dr. Ellis? The... I believe so. He's the head of entomology. Well, I don't know if he's the head, but he's the, the bee specialist of the entomologist there. Yeah. A little southern notes to his voice. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I have his name written down somewhere. Yeah, so. yeah, he's from Tennessee, so he's got a little of that southern charm in his voice. <laughs> so, yeah, that, if, if you could move him, I'd, that would be good, I think. Yeah, there's, there's no guarantees to this, but there's a, a few things we could try. For example... Uh, uh, making a platform up there 
and setting a hive body up there with, with frames and some drawn comb. We can put a scent in there that's really attractive to them and possibly they move out. Now, and a, the reason you might be seeing more bees outside is that they have filled that cavity with comb, with brood, with honey, and they say, well, this is all the space we have. We can go out and colonize, and half the queen and half of us will leave and go form a new, new colony, but the other half will stay here. Okay. So that's an option. Yeah, that's my, I mean, my sense was that the whole bee, that, that the whole tree is full of bees, and I was, that's kind of a, a daunting thought, you know, and kind it, of scary. It suggests that the, the tree might be hollow yeah, and hard to save. <laughs>